This video is about camera lens basics. It's for beginners. You'll get a basic understanding, a simple understanding of camera lens types. We're going to learn about focal length and those confusing MM numbers that are printed on the end of your lens. After watching this video, you'll understand what aperture and those f-stop numbers mean. We'll go over all those numbers, letters, and switches that are on a camera lens. Hi, this is Bruce at BetterDigitalPhotoTips.com. The YouTube channel and the website provide answers to your questions about digital photography. Okay, we'll start with lens type. There are two main categories of lens types. You have both zoom lenses and prime lenses. These four lenses here are examples of zoom lenses. These two up front are prime lenses. Zoom lenses have a variable focal length. This particular one happens to be a 70 to 200. This is my 24 to 105. This is my 10 to 18. And this is a 18 to 55 kit lens. Whereas these lenses are strictly 17 millimeter and 85 millimeter. As an example, right now you're watching this video with a zoom lens on the camera and it's zoomed out to the smaller number. This happens to be 24 millimeters. But if as we zoom in, we change the angle of view and our subject comes in closer, this is going to go all the way into 105. This is considered a telephoto, mild telephoto setting on this zoom lens. And if we go back to the 24, that's an intermediate wide angle. Shooting the same scene with this prime lens, I do not have the ability to change the angle of view or the focal length. So I have to actually move the camera in to get my subject to get bigger. All right, let's talk about those confusing MM numbers. MM is actually an abbreviation for a millimeter, with milli being one thousandth, one thousandth, and meter being one meter. One millimeter is one thousandth of a meter. So the way that translates, 50 millimeters is about two inches in English measurement. This lens is from an old film camera, and it's got a focal length of 50 millimeters. And this lens is made specifically for digital cameras, and it's got an 85 millimeter focal length. Generally speaking, lenses with longer focal lengths will be longer. It does depend on how they're designed, but it's generally true. And here, for instance, I'll zoom out. This lens is a 70 to 200 millimeter zoom, and this lens is a 100 to 400 millimeter zoom lens. And you can see they're actually the same length, even though the focal length ranges are different. All right, so here's where the millimeter numbers can be really confusing with focal lengths. Not all camera sensors are the same size. Because of that, a lens put on a full frame camera will give you a different angle of view when it's put on a camera with a crop size sensor. Now I'm a Canon shooter, but this is true for Nikon and it's true for all the other digital camera manufacturers that make full size sensor and crop sensor cameras. Check out these two cameras. They both have zoom lens ranges of about three times from their narrow to their wide setting. This one is an 18 to 55. It's called a kit lens, but it's for cameras with a smaller sensor. This one is a 24 to 70. It's a pro lens for full size cameras. They have the, almost the exact same angle of view when this is put on the smaller crop sensor and this is put on the full size sensor. If you look at the end, you can see that this will have a lot more coverage for a bigger area after the lens comes through and hits the sensor compared to this one, the smaller one. So this particular lens that's shooting this little video clip that you're looking at right now is a very wide lens. It has a limited zoom range. It's only 10 to 18. I'm going to show you that right now. That's zoomed in at 18 and that's back to 10. But the way you translate this zoom range, 10 to 18, to a full-size sensor is using what's called a crop factor. So camera makers will use the crop factor to help you figure out the zoom range and how your angle of view works out. So we're shooting this video with the 10 to 18 on a Canon 70D. The Canon crop sensor cameras have a 1.6x crop factor. So if we multiply that 10 to 18 times the 1.6, 
you get actually a zoom range equivalent of 28, no, 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 16 to 29 millimeters. So that's still quite a bit less than 50 millimeter normal perspective. So this particular lens is still a wide angle, but the 10 to 16 sounds like it's super wide, but it's actually about a 16 to 29 millimeter wide angle zoom lens. Okay, now stay with me here. This illustration will help you understand how the lens millimeter numbers relate to the different camera sizes. Look at the largest sensor on the left. For a full frame camera, 50 millimeters is considered norm a normal focal length. It's about the same perspective we have with our eyesight. There's no crop factor. If you have a zoom lens setting less than 50, like 35 or 28 or 24 millimeters, you're using a wide angle perspective with a full frame camera. If your lens setting is longer, like 70, 85, 100 or more, you're using a narrow telephoto perspective. Now, look at the crop sensor. You'd get the same perspective as a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera by using a 32 millimeter lens or lens setting on a crop sensor camera. Canon calls their crop sensor APS-C and Nikon ca calls their crop sensors Nikon DX. Here's where that crop factor number comes in. Stay with me. You just multiply the lens millimeter number on the crop lens by the crop factor to get the equivalent number for a full frame camera. In this case, a normal 32 millimeter lens on the crop sensor camera times 1.6 gives you a 50 millimeter equivalent. I know it can be confusing, but once you get a basic understanding of focal length and crop factor, you'll be in a much better position to choose the right lens for your situation. Moving along quickly with this illustration, this format uses a four thirds sensor. Olympus and Panasonic have cameras with this size sensor. A 25 millimeter lens gives you a normal perspective. A setting less than 25 millimeters would be wide and longer than 25 millimeters would be a telephoto setting. You might even consider watching this video a second time so that you really get to understand it. And finally, Canon and Nikon both make cameras that have a one inch sensor. So the crop factor is 2.7 and a normal lens would be 19 millimeters in focal length. So no matter what the camera is or what the lens is, you just know that the shorter focal lengths, the smaller numbers give you a wider angle of view. And as you zoom in closer, the bigger numbers, the higher MM numbers, your angle of view is narrower and your subject appears to be closer. Using a wide angle lens perspective, a short focal length is good for landscapes, architecture, shooting in tight, small little areas inside, photographing large groups of people, or you want to, when you want to create a really strong perspective. Lenses where you can use a long focal length and zoom in close to your subject, that's great for sports, wildlife, anything that's far in the distance or you, you can't get too close physically, you use your telephoto setting to zoom in and get closer. Okay, let's dive into lens aperture and those f-stop numbers. Aperture is simply the lens opening inside the lens where the light goes through and hits the sensor. The f-stop number refers to the size of that aperture. All right, so looking down at an old film camera, you can see that it had a mechanical aperture ring on the outside of the lens with f-stop numbers printed on it. As you turn the ring from smaller numbers to the bigger numbers, the aperture, that is the size of the opening for the light to pass through the lens, gets smaller. We'll explain that in a minute. Okay, so now we're looking through the lens. As we turn the ring from smaller f-stop numbers like f2.8 or f4 to the larger f-stop numbers, you can see the aperture getting smaller. Nowadays, the lens opening is adjusted internally and we see the f-stop numbers displayed electronically on our camera's LCD screen or in the viewfinder. All lenses have a maximum f-stop and it can vary between lens to lens. How big the aperture gets can affect how much light gets through the lens. That affects the shutter speed and the exposure of your image. The f-stop also dramatically affects 
the range of things that are in focus in your image. That's called depth of field. Okay, why do those bigger f-stop numbers, f11, f16, f22, why do those bigger numbers represent smaller lens openings? Well, it's a question I get a lot in my photo workshops, so let's answer that question now for you. F-stop numbers are actually a fraction. They're a ratio. They're a ratio between the lens opening and the focal length of the lens you're using. Let's look at an example now. Let's look at our old 50 millimeter lens, which if you remember is about two inches in length. If the aperture is about one inch in diameter, that's a ratio of one to two. The width of the diameter, how wide open the lens is compared to the focal length is one to two, so that's an f-stop of f2. If that lens opening was only half an inch, that's a ratio of a half an inch to two inches, which is a four to one ratio, so that's an uh, f-stop of f4. If that same lens was stopped down, another factor of two, down to a quarter inch, that diameter is one to eight. That ratio is one to eight of the lens diameter and the focal length, so then it's only an f8 lens opening. Photography shouldn't be all about getting bogged down with a bunch of numbers and letters. It should be about making nice images. Unfortunately, f-stops and shutter speeds are important when it comes to getting great shots. We finished this video on camera lens basics with a quick tour of the letters and numbers and switches on your typical camera lens. All right, this is a look at a typical lens. This happens to be a Canon 24 to 105. You can see the zoom numbers on the side of the lens barrel. If you go down to the other end, Canon zoom lens, EF refers to the size. If it said EFS, it would be the smaller lens for the Canon crop sensors, the 24 to 105 zoom range. And then the important number is the maximum F-stop. That one to four ratio means this is an F4 lens. The L means it's their pro line. IS stands for image stabilization, and then the USM is an ultrasonic motor. If you look down at the end, you can see the filter size. First you look at 24 to 1, 1 to 4 in L, but if you spin it around you see that it's a 77 millimeter filter. I always use a clear UV filter to protect the lens. I think that's a great idea. And then on the side of the lens barrel is the image stabilization, IS. You should keep that off if you're on a tripod, shooting with a tripod. And then you have the choice of AF for autofocus, or if you want to focus manually and have real specific control on what's being focused, you turn it to MF for manual focus. I hope this video was helpful on camera lens basics. Please subscribe to the channel, put your comments in the area below the video, tell me what part of this was the most helpful for you. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit the website and check out the links in the description.